have we done with midpoints yeah okay fine just give me a second let me check out ha ah, the formula one i have i hope i have not shown you i was about to show that just give me a second one minute let me share my screen just let me know if you are able to see my screen oh yeah okay fine so i have already told you how to find what is a midpoint it will divide the line segment into two equal parts okay now uh if i this you know the concept now i am going to introduce a formula for midpoint formula so usually when they are giving like x and y that's totally different but in a coordinate plane we are considering they are they will be giving the coordinates for you that is 4 comma 5 2 comma 4 like that okay if they are giving yeah, like yeah. that how to find the midpoint of the distance between so here when you can see the diagram here a and b are my uh, uh, line segment okay so m is the midpoint of a and b so how could i find that one okay so mm -hmm. it is x1 plus x2 divided by 2 comma y1 plus y2 divided by okay you got it yeah. so this is the formula we will be using for finding the midpoint of the given okay fine yeah. uh, so for example i will take this problem see they have given r and s so the line segment will be like this okay this is your r and this is your s they are asking us to find m is going to be the midpoint of the given thing okay, okay? <laughs> so 1 yeah. comma negative 3 and 4 comma 2 is my point So I need to find the midpoint of that is M. So that would be see always mark like this x1, y1, x2, y2. This will not uh, make you mistakes. So that's why we are writing like this. Okay, if you know thoroughly, then you can use it directly. Okay, so it's x1 plus x2 divided by two. So it is one plus four divided by two, comma negative three plus two divided by two. Okay, so that would be. Five upon two, comma negative one upon two. Okay, this will be the point. You understood? Yes, no. Yeah. And similarly, one more uh, way of asking. See, uh, they have given us J K is the line segment for us. Okay. okay. This you can expect uh, in your uh, what I will say the main one also you can expect this. Um, I can say in uh, this. Uh, Entrance exams also the second type model uh, you can expect actually, okay. So that I'm going to show you now. So the midpoint they have given to us, okay, um, and one end point is given. You need to find the next one, okay. How we are going to do that? That's what I'm going to show you. So they have given m uh, that is two comma one, and j is one comma four, and I need to find the coordinate of, okay, oh. So how I'm going to do that? Just give me a second. I could do it here as well. Okay. So, so the first one. See now, um, what is the uh, formula we are having? It is like uh, the midpoint is nothing but okay. It is x one plus x two divided. Sorry, x one plus x two divided by two. Comma y one plus y two divided by two. Okay, see this coordinate I'm having it here two comma one. Okay, oh now yes. this is your x one and this is your y one. So what I will do here it is one plus x two I don't know so that I will keep it as this divided by two and y one is nothing but four plus y two over two. Okay. Now it is like they are saying that the first coordinate is this one is equals to this. This is the meaning of that. Okay, and this one is equal to this. So equate both of these. So I can say that one plus x two over two equals to two. Okay, got yes. it. Just cross multiply. One plus x two will be equal to four, or x two will be equal to three. Okay. Okay. Next. Second uh, thing, we need to find y two. So it is four plus y two. So I'm just writing it directly. Okay, equals to two minus four, which is negative two. You can even check your answer by substituting in this. Okay, got it? Because three plus one 
is four divided by two is two. Okay, we are getting yeah. that. So this is one of the type of problem you can expect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move on to the next problem now. Okay. Now we are done with this one. I assure. Okay. Now I'm giving a problem. Just try. Can you try number eight and tell me? If not, I'll help you. Yeah. yeah. Negative six <laughs> and uh, negative eight. Very good. Okay, yes. Okay, let's move on to the next one now. Anything new? Okay, coming to your distance formula, this um, this is a distance formula. It will be used to find the distance between the given line segment, whatever you are dealing in the coordinate. Okay, this I have already shown you. This distance formula we can use it uh, wherever needed. This interrelated with the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, you know what is the Pythagorean theorem, right? Yeah. Okay. Just please. So whichever concepts you know, we are not going inside that and wasting time on that. Okay. Fine. The yeah. new yeah. concepts we will just go inside. One. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let us go for a quiz then. I think these are the exercise things. Okay, there is a quiz here. Um, this one you have already answered this time. Just give me a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, identify the segment bisector of RS, then find RS. M. M. Ah, what is RS then? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thirty-two. Yes, right. Okay. Now, uh, they have given the midpoint of JK is M. That is zero comma one one endpoint. They have given find the coordinates of the endpoint of K. Six negative one. Eight. Hey, good. Okay, a word problem we are seeing here. You can write, just write. Your mom asked you to run some errands on your way home from school. She wants you to stop at the post office and grocery store, which are both on the same straight road between your school and your house. The distance from your school to the post office is 376 yards. The distance from the post office to your house is 929 yards. And the distance from the grocery to your house is 5. The question is, where should you stop first? These kind of problems, first draw the image so that it will be useful for you. Is it the uh, is it the um, grocery store? Yes. Okay. Now, what is the distance from the post office to the grocery store? Six. 
792. Yes. What is the distance from your school to your house? 1,305. Now, you walk at a speed of 75 yards per minute. How long does it take you to walk straight home from school? Explain your answer. Seventeen point four minutes. Yes, such. Okay, next one. So the figure shows a coordinate plane on a base ball field. The distance from home plane to first base is nine. The pitching mound is the midpoint between home plane and the second base. Find the distance from home plane to the second base. Find the distance between home plane and the pitching mound. Explain how you find your answer. Distance from home plate to second base is 180 feet. Okay. The distance between home plate and the pitching mound is three square two yes. feet. Next one. So let's move on to the next. So, uh, coming to your perimeter and area. Okay. So that's also a very important thing when we are seeing with the coordinate planes. Okay. So okay. Okay. So, uh, this is very important concept of polygons. I hope I will uh, try to use is that everything is given to you. So? Okay, just give me a second. I will open a PowerPoint. Okay. okay. Because the explanation that would be better. Just give me a second, it's opening. Okay. Okay, in the meantime, we will just discuss what you know about polygons. Hmm? What you know about polygons? Polygons? Yeah. A polygon is a cl uh, is a closed shape. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, the minimum you can have a, uh, it starts with three straight lines, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, just this is what we're doing. This one. Just a minute, let me check. Otherwise, um, I'll go on with that. Okay. I think some of the areas I have. Okay, in the next class, I'll try to take a deeper and show you, okay? Right. Because that would be a good explanation when compared to this. But now I will use this one only. One quick second, 
Be a very good explanation. Okay, I'll just keep that somewhere else. I kept. I'll just continue with this. See, uh, any closed figure you call it to be a polygon. Main condition for a polygon is you are not allowed with curves. Okay, because a circle is not a polygon. Okay, so the uh, three-sided polygon is first. It always starts with three or more line segments. A polygon is a figure joined with three or more sides. Okay, straight lines. Okay, no curves are allowed. That's the condition for a polygon. Okay, now so this is the number of sides that I started. It's three or more. Three-sided polygon is a polygon. Four it is a quadrilateral. Five pentagon. Six hexagon. Seven heptagon. Eight octagon. Nine nanogon. Ten decahedron. Twelve uh, dodecahedron. Uh, from 13, uh, it is like uh, you will say 13 gun, 14 gun, 15 gun. So that name depends upon the numbers. Okay. So that's why they have specified here N gun. Got it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So when I'm talking about your polygons, there are two types of polygons. Okay. So you have convex polygons and concave polygons. Okay. Convex polygons is like where. No line that contains the side of the polygon. Uh, like you will get an interior here. You are able to see that cover point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that if it is not convex, the vertex will be coming inside for this. Okay. If it is, uh, that's called as a point. For your, uh, I will say like this. See, for example, for a convex polygon, the vertex will be facing outside. Okay. There will be no inside. Vertex and all is facing outside. That's called a convex polygon. Okay, you got it. If the vertex okay. is facing inside, like this, something polygon is coming. Then it's called a concave polygon. You got it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let me move on to the next one. So classifying the polygon. So this is like this. I will say it as a concave polygon. Because the uh, angle is coming inside, the vertex is coming inside. Okay, it is having four sides, and it is a quadrilateral. It is a concave one. Okay, because one of the vertex is facing inside. The second one, it's a hexagon. It is a six-sided figure, but it's convex because the vertex are all facing outside. Okay. Yes. Okay. Can you tell me uh, the polygon by the number of sides here? Question number one. Pentagon. Pardon, sorry? Pentagon. Okay, good. Number two. Heptagon. Yes. Heptagon. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. One. Okay. <clears throat> Let me move on to the next one now. Okay, so that was an introduction of the polygon. Okay, now we are going to find the perimeter and area of the in the coordinate plane. Okay, so when I'm talking about perimeter, perimeter is nothing but the circumference of the figure. It's the fencing. Perimeter is nothing but the fencing for the house or something. For example, I'm saying. Okay, so for a triangle, the perimeter is sum of all the sides. Okay, for everything, whatever uh, polygon you are going to consider, the sum of all the sides of polygon to be the Perimeter. Okay. For a square, it is four times s. For a rectangle, it is two times the length because you have two length here and two length here. Okay. And area of a triangle is half base times height, and area of a square is s. Square. Okay. Fine. You got it. Yeah. <coughs> Suppose uh, previously you would have uh, just used the uh, what is that? They will give you a, b, c. They are asking the sides. They will give you and ask you to find the perimeter. But here. We are going to be everything in coordinate. Okay, fine. So if I'm going to have that, this is A, B, and C. Okay, fine. Now, yeah. so in A, B, C, first you mark the coordinates. They will not give you which is there. They will give you there is a triangle and the vertices. So you have to draw the figure. Okay, now I need to find the perimeter. Perimeter is nothing but sum of all the sides. So 
you have to use the distance formula and find what is the distance between A B. Then C. Then C. A. Okay. So what is the distance formula? Square root of x two minus x one divided by square plus y two minus x one. Okay. First, they have taken the points of A and B. X one, y one. X two, y two. Okay. Substitute the values. You are just enough. Okay. You understood, Paul? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Similarly, we are finding the length of B C. All the things will be in terms of absolute value. There should be negative values, or there should not be negative values because we are dealing with distance. Distance can be negative. And then uh, you have found out all the sides. What they are doing there? Sum of all the sides. That means you are adding up everything. So that is AB plus BC plus. So I am getting AB. Understood? Yes. Okay. Um. Can you try a question number five? And tell me what is the perimeter of the given polygon? It is four-sided. We are having. Okay, just think. Mm -hmm. Oh shoot! Okay. Or oh, this is a parallelogram. Yes, right. Perimeter is going to be sum of all the sides, so you need to find the distance for each and every thing. Okay. Yeah. Is it seventeen point two? Yes, right. Okay, so so it depends upon the figure they are proposing and they are giving you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, coming to your area. So area only the formula actually differs. Okay, it depends upon the area of a triangle is different, rectangle is different, all those things. Okay. So first they are given here three coordinates. So you have to assume that. It is Right. Any of the points half base back to height. Okay. First, what they have done, they have just plotted the points. Okay. So you take a coordinate plane and then you mark the points. Okay. Now, see, I wanted to find the base. Base is nothing but F in here. So I need to find the distance. Use the distance for that. Okay. Find four. Now, the height. So what is the formula for area? It is half base times the height. Okay. So the base I have got it to be eight. The height of this. So height I need to find it. So here when I am talking about the height, it is nothing but six. Okay, because the height is the distance b from the point b to the line segment m. Okay. Yes. yes. So you can just measure it out from here. Also. How much distance it has come? Okay. You understood? From three yeah. to the yeah. negative three. So it is going to be six. Okay. So You have just substituted. This is the formula for the way to calculate for area of a triangle. Okay. Uh, usually, it is like small uh, things we will be doing here. We are doing with a 
what i'll say uh, with a coordinate plane that's the best. okay now can we try with uh, this is for a quarter level okay okay first try with seven and see question number seven then we can go for a quarter level Seven point five. Yes, very good. Okay. Next, can you try for nine? First, see to that whether it is a rectangle or square. Okay. So, if it is a square, it is nothing but your uh, you know the area of the square formula, right? S square. Mm -hmm. And there is well for a if it is a rectangle, it would be two times of oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Base times height. Twelve. Okay, good. Okay. So this is like the word problems they are making it up. So main thing you have to understand or you have to draw the coordinate plane. That's very important. How you are marking it. Okay, and just know that what you need to find. This you can use it in all the problems. Just work out or set your mind that what I need to find, what will be the formula and all those things, and you can start finding it out. Okay. See, for example, you are building a shed in your backyard. The diagram shows the four vertices of the shed. Each unit in the coordinate planes represents one foot. Find the area of the floor of the shed. Okay. Thirty. Uh, uh, one more thing I wanted to confirm for you. I hope so. Uh, in your things, you won't have word problems, right? Is it there? Yeah, it is. You won't be having word problems, am I right? I don't think so. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I have seen in your things, it won't be there. In Texas and other things, they will have. Okay, I'm just giving for your practice only. Okay, might be it will be useful for your uh, other AMC exams and other things. Okay. So okay. now they are saying they have given a coordinate axis for you. It's like. Or figure you have got here, okay? Now they are just finding the length and width of the given things. Okay? Then they are applying the formula. It's given in a rectangle, <coughs> so length times the width. Okay? Yes. Okay. The same thing. Can you find the area of the patio here? Twenty. Okay, this is just exercise we are having here. Okay, we will just try to do the different problems are not the same. Okay, um, this this model we will just try. Okay, why can't you try this one? Uh, oh, questionable level. Yeah.
You're ready to solve, right? Yeah. yeah. One quick second. 